Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 Um, I see people are still connecting, so let's uh, wait a bit. Mm, all right. There are already four people. Exciting. Okay, nice. Right. Yeah, so um, hello once again. And I uh, um, welcome you all on our today's webinar uh, on uh, how to make a portfolio for child modeling. And uh, let's just give a couple more minutes for people to connect and uh, to keep you busy. Uh, let's find out on um, how old are your kids. Uh, so I'll just uh, make a quick poll here. And you can uh, mark, mark the age. 0 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, and 16 to 17. And let's see which age group, each age range wins. Okay, nice. All right, so it's uh, about half, it's zero to five. Uh, and uh, around 40% is uh, six to 10 years old. And the least part is about, uh, let's say it's 11% to 13, it's 11 to 15 years old. Okay, great, great. Okay. We have 58 people in the room already. Nice. Okay, I'll leave the poll open uh, for uh, all the people who are still connecting. And I guess uh, we can slowly start. So uh, once again, my name is Kate and I'm uh, head of casting director's department at Kids Casting. And today we have invited all of you to discuss one very special topic on how to make a portfolio for child modeling. Uh, I've been waiting for this session for quite a long time and I'm truly thrilled uh, to invite our special guest, a videographer of, of Callcraft. Um, she's a truly talented videographer and she's been uh, casting kids and, uh, and shooting them for over three years now. So, and so far she has filmed over 50 commercial videos. So let's welcome her to the stage, uh, Emily Broderick. Hi, thanks so much for having me. We are, we are so pleased to help you. <laughs> to have <laughs> me. And uh, we just can't wait to hear all those insights and all that valuable information that our parents can use to update their profiles in order to be considered by videographers, photographers, or even casting directors for the commercial shoots. That's that's what they're all uh, they're looking for. All that information, all those tips and tricks, all the secrets. Yeah. Hopefully, I can uh, I can deliver and give some insights, some fun things, some. Um, some basics and some, you know, higher level stuff and um, get some kids casted. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, so I guess uh, we can start. Um, so would you like, would you like uh, something to share from your side? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and share um, my screen with um, my presentation, just going over a few things. Um, in just one second. All right. So, um, like Kate said, I am the videographer for a brand called Coolcraft. Um, we're here in Chicago. Um, it's been over 75 years. They've made baby products um, the whole time and four primary brands and I'm their in-house videographer for all of them. Um, we work mainly with Coolcraft and Contours. Those are our brands. And then we license with Sealy Mattresses and Sesame Street. So, um, we're making a lot of videos for a lot of different products. And so we need a lot of kids of different ages, um, which is how I found kids casting. Um, but yeah, so I graduated from DePaul uh, in film and television, which is where I got my casting director start, um, working with short films, did a couple of kids um, casting situations there, um, but really got into it now in the last couple of years. Um, and we're constantly looking for kids um, mainly ages zero to four. That's kind of my specialty. Um, that's mostly what the products that we're working with are um, made for. So most of my expertise is centered around those ages, but a lot of the um, 
the tips and a lot of the things that I've learned um, and that I'm looking for, I think are fairly universal for all kids ages. Um, so we can just, a couple of the things will just be slightly adjusted um, based on that. So, um, All right, so <laughs> at the very basis of what we're talking about is what a portfolio is. Um, so it's a clean um, definition here. So it's a collection of records to reflect your accomplishments, skills, expertise. You know, the older we get, it's kind of um, equal to like a resume. Um, but in this case, it really is just how you represent your child and what casting directors and videographers are seeing. Um, you know, they're not meeting them in person, unfortunately, right off the bat. But this is how we get to see what your who your child is, um, what they look like, kind of what their experience level is, um, what their skills are, their traits are. Um, so it's really just a first look, um, which is why it's so important um, and why the kids need one. Um, so it kind of breaks down into three main categories for me, at least. Um, it's an introduction. It's the first time, you know, quote unquote, meeting them. Um, so if we're, if we have a casting call for something, we're going to get a certain amount of submissions. Um, your very first introduction to your child is going to be with this portfolio most of the time. Um, and it's a first impression, so they want it to be a good one, um, which is why so many of what we're going to be talking about today or what I have is how to make it the best it can possibly be and really catch the attention of a casting director. Um, many of these pages or many situations, it's like there's a lot of kids submitting um, and you want to make sure that you're standing out, that you really show that you're, you know, your child's best features, like why they want to be doing this, et cetera. Um, and this is a great way to do so. Um, secondly, it's a resume. Like I said, um, it shows off if they've done work before, their experience level. Um, it's not a necessity to have experience. Obviously, they're some of the time babies, so they have very little experience in most things, including work. Um, but if you have had jobs that you've, you know, your child has done, it's a great way to show that off um, and just, you know, generally kind of represents them, which goes into the third part. It's who they are. Um, it's why they're here. If you have a baby that's just, you know, obsessed with the camera, that's a great reason why, you know, you're going to be doing modeling and things like that. So it's the truly the most clean and like eff eff efficient and effective way of representing yourself and your child. Um, and then we get into some of the more interesting things like what people look for. Um, again, I'm speaking for myself. Um, in a lot of cases, we're looking for children zero to four years old, but I think that most of this stuff is fairly universal, um, and I can just kind of run down everything. Um, and Kate, if you want me to just stop, and if you have any questions about anything, feel free um, to oh, ask. Go on. It is all perfect. That's exactly <laughs> what we want to hear from you. Okay. <laughs> So that after the webinar, all the parents will go and update those profiles. Yeah. New pictures, more skills, yes. more information, description, like everything. My main thing is really the more information, the better, right? You, I would love to get to talk to every or like meet every child that we potentially can cast, but, you know, we can't. Um, so in a lot of cases, like the most information I can have is the best information I can have. Um so this is what I look for most of the time, mainly like in the order. So first things first, pictures. It's pretty straightforward. Um, Kids Casting has a great platform, but it really puts pictures first. Um, this makes sense if I'm hiring a model to be in a video or in a you know photo shoot. I need to know what they look like. Um, most cases, it's fairly simple. Um, most if not all babies and children are adorable. Um, so it's really just about seeing, you know, does it look, do they look like, um, what's like the age, how comfortable are they in front of the camera? Um, we're really look, like a lot of the pictures are really about making sure that what we're seeing is, you know, we, that's what we're going to be looking for. How do they look on camera? Um, so the most important thing is a smile. We know most kids can frown and be sad. Um, the real question is, can a baby smile? Um, 
you know, we're most likely not going to be hiring a child to look upset. Um, if we do, we know that they've pretty much got that covered. Um, so 99.99% of the time, I'm looking for the first main picture to be a cute little smile. Um, if this is a for, you know, an older child, I would still count the same thing. You want to, you know, you want to know that the child is welcoming, has like a nice smile. Um, but, you know, as they do get older, if they're looking for um, more serious roles, if they're looking for acting roles specifically, I think that that can kind of be the the one exception to a smile picture. I would say it should still be the main one, in my opinion. Um, but feel free, the older they are and the more they're looking for, for example, acting things to be a little bit more versatile. Um, but for the most part, especially children under four, children under 10, we want to smile. Um, and we want to see how comfortable they are in front of the camera. Um, if the pictures that you're choosing, if they're, you know, looking away, if they're not looking into the camera, if they seem uncomfortable, it's going to give a feeling that they're not comfortable in front of the camera. And then, you know, it begs the question of if we hire them, are they going to not want their picture taken or not want to be on camera, um, which can obviously cause issues um, when we're trying. And that's the main point we're trying to get. So that's a great thing to represent. You know, if your child is really comfortable in front of the camera, show us that. Um, but don't pick a picture that's going to be, you know, off to the side or they're looking away. They're looking uncomfortable. Um, My ask and, a question about yeah. the picture. Do you need professional headshots or those can still be taken on a cell phone since kids grow so fast? Um, yeah. What do you prefer? So I can, uh, I have a couple sizes to cover this later, actually, but my quick answer is it depends on the age of the child, really. Um, most children, and I'll go over this in a little bit, but actually I think it's the next slide, but I would say children under 10 I don't pay for it unless you know for sure this is going to be like a thing that they're going ahead with especially children under four they you know and we work with babies where it's like they look different six months to nine months where you know if you're going to buy a headshot at six months they're going to look entirely different so you spent all this money for nothing um so I would say especially with babies like do not worry about professional headshots. There's tons of other options of things that you can do. Like you said, our cameras on our phones are already incredible. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of do's and don'ts for pictures um, that I have. Um, and that's really my main thing is um, I'm not going to not hire a child because they have a professional headshot over another child. Um, I'm just going to pick based on who has, you know, making sure that they have a clear picture where I can see what they look like um, and see that they're comfortable. Um, so I'll go more into that in a little bit, but that's a really good point because it's something where, you know, you don't really think about it. Older actors, of course they get headshots, um, but they also look the same after, you know, after a year. Um, and with kids, it's, it can get a little bit more complicated, um, but I will cover it a little bit more. Um, the last thing with pictures up to date. Um, we've had a couple situations where, you know, we're looking through kids casting and we see a picture of a newborn and a picture of a three-year-old. Um, it gets, obviously, we assume the three-year-old is the most recent picture, but it does get a little bit confusing if you're looking through, like, for a certain age. So make sure that you're going in, you're updating your pictures, and they're the most recent they can possibly be. Um, next, information. Uh, kids casting specifically has a really nice setup of having a spot for information. Age is, of course, really important. Um, if your child is under one, being specific with months is fairly important. We have products, and I know that a lot of other baby gear products um, are the same way, where we can hire a child that's, you know, three to four months old, but we can't hire a child that's five to six months old because of weight and height restrictions for that product. So we really need to know specific months. Um, if you're comfortable adding a date of birth, I would recommend it for children that are, you know, under two. Um, but again, that is, a, you know, an intimate detail. So it's really up to the parent's discretion. Other things, height, weight, if they're a baby, um, can be important for us. But again, fluctuates fairly, like, quickly. So that might be something we usually will then email the parent and ask, what are their current height and weight? So that's just something to keep in mind. Skills. You know, babies have certain skills. Mostly it's, you know, cute smiles or, you know, if they can walk, if they can um, say words, if they respond to certain music or if they dance. Um, and then as they get older, you know, um, athletic skills, acting skills, things like that. It's just important to know if they're, if your child has a certain skill, 
whatever it might be, add it. Um, it can't hurt. You know, it's always better to know more information. And then lastly, contact info. Um, a lot of people put their email addresses, even their phone numbers. It's not a necessity because Kids Casting specifically does have like a contact feature. However, a lot of the time people are more responsive when you're reaching out to them directly or it's a little bit easier, right? You're, you might not be checking your portal every single day, but you're probably checking your email every single day. Um, so a lot of times, especially when we're on a quick turnaround, we will reach out to people directly per email. So it's good to have because then you might be able to, you know, catch something you otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. Um, um, I just want to ask really quick, uh, yeah. maybe you have a slide about skills. And if not, I'll ask. I don't really know. <laughs> I'm just wondering. So basically the same way you have to keep like updated pictures, the same way parents should update skills as the kid grows and those skills also change. So basically it's never ending story. Like he can walk, yes. he can dance, he can, I don't know, jump or anything yes. like that. I would definitely say this. Yeah. I mean, if your child is four years old, I wouldn't add like can walk. You know, we, we know your child can most likely walk, <laughs> right? Like a 10 year old can walk. But if your 10 year old is an, um, you know, a gymnast or if your 10 year old um, sings or does um, pageants or, um, you know, I mean, modeling is different than acting, right? Acting is going to have a whole other set of skills. They can speak a different language, do accents for modeling. It's, you know, they've done, um, you know, maybe they've done fashion modeling versus product modeling, um, or they're, I don't know, can stand on their hands. I don't know, something crazy like that. Yes, keep it updated. Um, maybe there's a really niche thing people are looking for. And you adding that is going to be the thing that makes them click on that profile rather than somebody else's profile. Um, but yes, keep it updated. Um, it would be odd to say, you know, um, can say mom and dad or mama, and, you know, your child is three or four where it's gotten to a point where they're probably speaking more than that. Right. So you want to see things are updated. Plus, when things are updated, it shows us that you're serious um, and that shows us that you're going to be responsive and you're um, invested. If things are outdated, we don't know when the last time is you've checked your profile. So we don't know if you're going to respond to us. Right. So it sends a certain message to keep things updated, which I think is really important. Yeah, that's um, actually a really good point. Keeping that profile professional and yes. putting as much information as you can. So all the advice uh, for all the parents, just go look at your child and think of <laughs> all the skills that he has <laughs> and yes. ask them on, the, on the profile because possibly Emily's looking for those skills. Yeah, I mean, we have crazy stuff. Like, you know, we're, we just did a, we're doing a walker shoot. So we're looking for kids that, can't quite walk, but can walk in a walker, right? They can push themselves forward. So if that's something your child can do, add it. Um, we do like bathers, right? So if your child is like really fussy when it comes to water, don't put that. But if it's like loves bath time, that's something that you could add as well, right? It's situations that your child excels in that others might not. Um, it's a skill. Um, it's different, obviously, when it's a baby um, versus an older child. But I mean, we're always looking for certain things. Um, so I would say, add. I mean, I think I'm not really sure what the other side of the of it looks like, right? I'm not quite sure what it looks like for a parent typing things in. I don't know if it's a drop down list or if it's like they just type in their own skills, but I've seen. I mean, they can put it freeway. Like, okay. Just, yeah. Because I've seen yeah, things like you know, cute smile or bubbly or like, you know, loves music and things like that, where it doesn't need to be like a hard skill. It can be what, you know, in our, our age would be a soft skill, you know, great with people. Um, one of the profiles I'm showing later for a little boy named Theo, who we've worked with a couple times um, or once and we love, and he did just a great job on our shoot, but he, they have a really strong profile is like, they added in it, you know, you have an area that you can type and they added in that like he doesn't have stranger danger, right? He loves anyone that he comes in contact with, which is a great skill because sometimes babies will like not even look at you, right? So if your kid is like, just loves everybody and loves to be around people, that's something that's important, especially in a situation that you're going to be putting them in with strangers um, where they need to be comfortable, right? So it could be even things that you don't think are skills, I would just add, Um because I usually can't hurt you. I can only help. <laughs> um, but yeah, so next to that, um, I would say previous work is another thing I'm looking for. 
not always. Again, if I'm looking for a newborn, I do not expect them to have already done, you know, four commercials. Um, but we're looking for if you have done previous work, you should add it. Um, I think that one of the good things about and I'll talk about this later is kids casting specifically, is there's so space to put it right. You're not just kind of randomly typing things up. There are ways that you can use the software to showcase your work, whether that's adding pictures of them on set, adding pictures of the final product as one of your pictures, adding videos of them on set, or, you know, if they were in a video, adding that, or adding it as like a little caption at the bottom. I know there's a, you know, like a timeline that you can do um, saying like industry work and just doing like, you know, photo shoot for mattress for Cole Craft. And then like a quick write up, like, you know, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It could just be like, we took some pictures. And then, you know, if you know of the final product, link it to it so that the casting director can, director can be like, oh, great. Like this baby did so good. They chose them for this product. Right. So if you have it, show it off. If you don't have it, that's fine. But make sure that like as you're getting work, that's something that you update as well. Um, again, if, you know, I'm reaching out to someone, they're like, oh, yeah, they've done four things but they are not on the on the profile or on the portfolio, it again is like, okay, we well, are not updating that as often as you could be. Um, and that leads straightly into video. So video, I think, is a fairly new thing. If you have it, add it. It's the same thing of pictures. Um, I wouldn't just add anything random, right? Like you don't want just like a random picture, like a random, you know, Snapchat video or something. You want to make sure that it is still professional. But let's say like you have a video of um, them being on set or a video that they were in, for example, any of the kids that we work with, we say, here's the final video, use it for whatever you need, especially for portfolio work, right? Use that link to show off how great they were on set and how great they are in the video. So add that there's really no harm. Um, otherwise, if there's like, you know, the older they get, feel free to do like a slate, um, which usually would just be a video of your child saying their name and their age, um, maybe even like a fun fact about themselves or something that they're looking forward to doing in modeling. Somewhere like, you know, video is a great way to see personality as well that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see in pictures and just in write-ups. So the older they get, feel free, you know, adding things like that. Or again, like if they're in a play, you know, and you have a great little video of that, um, I would be a little bit more picky with video than with pictures just because people are going to be spending time watching those videos you don't want to just put like eight videos up um but if you have something that's really great and if you have something that really represents what the work that they've done I would add it um you know you might as well so that was a lot <laughs> um so valuable I mean I love it <laughs> Keep on talking. Okay. Okay. I I won't stop. Um, and then we'll go right into needing professional headshots. Um, and then this is kind of how I broke it down before. Um, under 10 years, um, I would say no. You know, if you're eight and your child's like, this is what I want to do, I'm really into this. Like I you're, you know, you're looking at national campaigns, you're looking at big, you know, Disney, things like that. Maybe that's something that you want to look into. Um, but for the most part, especially when your child is quickly changing headshots, professional headshots can get really, really expensive and you don't want to have to do them every single year. Um, what I would recommend is specifically what I see a lot is young kids. They'll do photo shoots like, you know, the six month photo shoot or the one year photo shoot. There are professional settings in which your child is getting photographed. Use it. Um, you know, if the pictures turn out nice, even if they have a little block set that says six months next to it, you know, we know it's okay to reuse those pictures. It, they're professional pictures of your child as long as they're up to date. Um, I think that, you know, parents are going to be taking tons of pictures of their children anyway. That's my, my expertise <laughs> with children is usually the parents, you know, tons and tons of pictures. And if you pick a couple really, really solid ones, that should be fine. I'm never with babies. We never, you know, I'm never going to be like, oh, they have, you know, an edited fancy headshot. Of course, we're going to hire them. No, it's really, you know, are the pictures 
clearer? Can we see the child? Are they smiling? Are there multiple pictures? Maybe one of the face, one of him, like them in a cute little outfit, or if they're walking, like one of them toddling around or things like that. There's even been pictures of like babies eating and you know how babies eat. They have like food all over their face. It's adorable. It's cute. If, you know, if your child has personality, if they have a funky haircut, um, you know, little girls with like the pigtails, anything like that, you know, we want to see personality, but we want to make sure that it's personality while still representing your child in a professional way. Um, so my personal opinion, and again, this is what I think, this is not the end all be all on headshots, is that that's something that the older the child is, the more likely you'll want to consider it. But it's something that like, when you get the full legitimate headshots, it can be a decent expense. Other options you have, though, like you can use a school picture. Um, you can use if you have like, you know, a local photographer or a friend who is a photographer has a camera, like just go take some nice pictures. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly edited and perfectly everything as long as they are, you know, as, as long as it seems like you've put some work into it. It's not just like a selfie they've taken, you know, in the kitchen one day you're putting work into it. Right. Um, so that's my, that would be my opinion. And I also would say like a headshot would usually be, you know, shoulders up. The older they get, and even, I mean, even children, you also want some variety, right? Like even if you have like one headshot, then add some full body or, you know, things like that. People want to, you know, especially if you're casting for like clothing, um, like a clothing brand, they're going to want to see what the person looks like, proportions, things like that, right? Um, so with pictures, you want variety, but you do not need professional unless that's something that you're like, your child is saying, look, this is something I want to pursue, you know, then, and then it gets into things like if they're doing theater, if they're doing um, high end, you know, campaigns and things like that, people will start asking for headshots. Um, you know, most likely, you know, if you're applying to like a national campaign, they'll expect a headshot if they're over a certain age. Um, but I've never experienced a situation where a child is turned down because they do not have a headshot as long as we're able to see what they look like. And it looks like they've put some work into the pictures, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's really important because we uh, we, we keep on getting those questions all the time. I mean, yeah. do you need the professional headshot? How much does it cost? And if it's around 500, I mean, like it's too spendy to, you know, like yeah. every month you have to go and look for a photographer and everything. Yeah, I mean, if you're if, it, if it's a baby that you're working with, um, which is what we're usually working with, your child is going to look different every week. There's no way that spending $500 on headshots is even, it's going to last you a week and then they're going to look different. Um, I would say it's much more important to have up-to-date photography than professional photography. I would much rather see what your child looks like currently than what they looked like professionally like three months ago. So that's what I would say. Um, but again, it also is different if, for example, if your child gets representation, if you start working through um, like a talent agency, if that's something that, you know, they get represented, um, that is something that they will talk about, right? If they get an agent, especially older kids, um, they will most likely push for headshots. And that's just how most agencies work. But that is something where I would say, cross that bridge when you get to it. Most kids don't need professional headshots to get representation um it'll be something that once it comes up I think that, that that's a question that you can ask um and there's so many options right you don't need to do like a three thousand dollar headshot shoe with eight different outfits right you can also do like there's photographers that are gonna be like let's give us half an hour hundred and fifty dollars just a couple shots like you all you really need is like two to three pictures um, so there's a variety. So if that's something that you're considering, um, to like, you know, elevate your profile after a certain age, um, look for options. You're not, you know, you can, you can find anything from, there's oftentimes photographers that'll do it for free to get like, you know, to build their portfolio of work. So, you know, there's just tons of options that don't just be like, oh, I have to spend a couple grand to get this headshot there's a ton of options that you can, that you can explore. Um, yeah. So 
Um, and then speaking of pictures, if you are going to be taking them yourself, here is a couple of things that we are that I have realized over working with kids are that are some do's and don'ts. This is not the end all be all, but these are things that we look for. So if you're going to be taking the picture for your child, um, if you're having someone take a picture, um, like I said, it can be on an iPhone. The, they're really good nowadays. <laughs> they take better pictures than certain cameras do. Um, go outside. Uh, go to a cool location and take some pictures. Um, if it's a baby, you know, even if they're at home, put them in a cute little outfit, take some pictures, but make sure like, you know, you are taking pictures with the intent to use them. Um, I think that that's the most efficient way of doing it. So our first do would be to take clear pictures. Um, we've, I've seen blurry pictures. I've seen pictures where you can see half the child's face. It's not really helpful for us. Um, I'm casting your child based on and for, you know, on how they look and how they're going to be featured and what they're going to look like. So we need to be able to see their face clearly, a smile, ideally. <laughs> um, and we, I would never recommend using a filter. I've seen pictures, you know, of, um, I would, you know, no filters that obscure the face for sure. Um, but even pictures like beauty, like beauty filter for filters, it's a baby. It's cute. You don't have to beauty filter your child. Um, I would rather just see what they look like naturally because we're not going to be adding filters, um, you know, or anything like that. That's just not a thing that we do. Um, you know, if it's like you're color correcting it a little bit or you're adding, you know, you're, you're brightening up the picture. Of course, that's fine. But don't do anything that's going to change the way that your child looks. Um, it's distracting. And it's not true to who they are, um, which is really what they're looking, what we're looking for. Um, another do is if you're gonna go and take pictures, pick a clean back like background. You know, go on a walk with you know if your child is older, go on a walk. Um, you know, have them pick an outfit, go on a walk, and um, take some pictures. If you find a, like just a clean white wall, take pictures with that. Brick walls are always great, even if you're like, ooh, a mural with some fun colors do that. Um, you just don't want to be super distracting. Um, but you want your pictures, you know, that's how it's going to elevate your pictures. It's going to help. It's going to make them look more professional and like you're intending to use them for the portfolio. Um, because our other don't is just don't pull random pictures from your camera roll, right? Like, it's just like, oh, here is my child doing something. I'll add that unless we can see them well. Um, and unless it's a really good representation of who they are, don't add it. Um, that's why I always recommend if you're going to just do a, like your own pictures, do a little photo shoot or don't even just do a little photo shoot. Just be like, oh, she looks super cute. Let me take a picture, get her to look in the camera, things like that. So I think the main thing is just like make sure that you have the intent. Um, our last do is use recent pictures and take pictures often. Um, this is important with babies specifically. They're going to change. So if you're taking pictures often and you're doing these little mini things like knowing, oh, OK, she's grown up a bunch. Um, I need a new, a more recent picture. Be taking pictures more often. More likely one of those is going to be a really strong picture. Um, and then our other don't is show sad, angry, uninterested kids. If the kid doesn't look like it's happy to be there, I don't, don't think they'll be happy to be at a photo shoot. Um, so we want to see happy, smiley, excited kids, kids that are comfortable in front of the camera. Um, these are so, just some of the things from what, you know, I've experienced. Um, but I would just say when you're, if you're going to be taking pictures for yourself, for your, of your child, do it with some intent. Don't, you know, just, don't just like take random pictures, say, okay, I know I I need a clear picture of them smiling. So maybe, you know, that's on your mind when you're out and about or you're just at home and your kid is looking really cute. Be like, okay, yes, this is what I'm going to be taking the picture of. Um, and that way you don't have to spend any money, but you're still taking intent, like pictures that are focused and that are going to be really good for your child's portfolio. And right. then- Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then lastly, we talked about, or this was a kind of a thing, what to wear for headshots. It's kind of entirely up to you. Um, headshots or other profile pictures, portfolio pictures, 
my only two things are age appropriate and non-distracting. Um, right. Like a baby, you know, you, if you wanted them to look like a baby, you want them to be cute and look adorable. Um, so make sure that they're dressed age appropriately. And then the older they get as well, um, you know, an eight-year-old should be dressed like an eight-year-old. Um, a lot of times people think that they need to dress them up older, look like a teenager. No, they should be an eight-year-old, right? If they're going to be playing an eight-year-old, that's how they should be. And then non-distracting, um, even that, you know, even if, you know, just pick whatever works, whatever they're comfortable in. Um, I would say no sunglasses, hats, things like that. Nothing to obscure the face. Um, that's what we want to see. That's the moneymaker. But something that's going to make them feel comfortable and um, really draw attention to just to them. It's my only two main things. There's nothing really, there's no other rules when it comes to that. Unless, for example, you're, you know you're going to be you know, if, if, for example, you're taking a picture for a certain role and they're like, okay, this is going to be, you know, um, a winter product. If you're sending this for a certain person, for a certain thing, put them in a coat. It can't hurt. But for the overall like, re like representative picture, just make sure it's age appropriate and make sure it's not very distracting. Those are the only things that you really have to look out for. You know, I just have one question. Um, yeah. Uh, here's Jennifer asking, my daughter wears glasses. Should I remove for photos to get a clear picture of her face? If your child wears glasses um, and they do not wear contacts, at any, which is totally fine, take pictures of her wearing the glasses. Um, I would say maybe do both just to have in case. But if your child is going to be on a video shoot or a photo shoot and like you're, you know, they want to be able to see um then make sure that like you are representing them the way that they're going to be on that day um if you say for example my child wears glasses but she also has contacts then take a pic take pictures with um glasses and with contacts because maybe one or the other is going to be the preference of the casting director um but my main thing is saying like you should always just represent your child the way your child is and is going to be the day that they hire them um, I know glasses can get complicated video photo wise with reflect like lights and things like that. Um, we haven't specifically dealt with it. I've had parents that have glasses and we'll usually ask if they have contacts to have them. Um, but again, I think that at the end of the day, it's the most important that you're representing your child the way that they're going to be the most comfortable and like the happiest. So I would say, yeah, take pictures with the glasses if you can um, and take some without if that, you know, if that's something that you're worried about um, and post both. <laughs> or, you know, if it's a question where the most likely the casting director might reach out and say, hey, I see your child has glasses. Um, does she wear contacts or is she comfortable without him? And in that case, they might request pictures. Um, but you want to make sure that you're like representing your child to the, the truest and most natural way that you can. Right, might right. <laughs> I agree totally, of course, because if the kid will come on set and he won't feel comfortable yeah. without glasses, what would no. you do? I mean, yeah, exactly. So it's really just making sure that you, the portfolio is just a way to, for you to represent your child. Um, it's how the person is going to see them for the first time. It's how, what they're going to know of them. Um, and I think being the most authentic you can be with it is the best you can do and then if that's something that if then they still want to hire your child but they're like hey we're also you know we're looking for no glasses blah, blah blah then they'll ask you does your child wear contacts or if for example you have a pictures of your child with glasses on but they do wear contacts put that in the description put that in the information say uh, my my child wears glasses but they have contacts you know if that's something that you if you know and feel comfortable in contacts as well then they know, okay, they wear glasses, great. But maybe we're not looking for that right now in this specific situation. They know that they have the capability of wearing contacts as well. And if not, that's totally fine. Just make sure that you're representing your child the way that you know, you'd know want to and that the way that they like know the most information about them. Right, right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, so lastly, I just have a couple of quick tips and tricks. Um, and just kind of summing everything up. Um, so number one, pictures are the most important. 
Um, I don't know. I've been in situations where people submit their child for a casting call and there's not a single picture. I cannot judge your child. I cannot consider them for casting if I can't see them. So that's an automatic, you know, decline. Um, it's the most basic more than anything else. It's going to be important to see them. Uh, number two, keep the portfolio as updated as possible. We talked about this, um, especially when they're younger or um, to make sure that you are really representing yourself and your child as being professional and interested. You want to make sure that it is up to date. Number three, use the software. So this is kids casting specific. Um, if uh, you're not starting from scratch, you don't have to come up with a template for your portfolio. Kids casting gives you a software, a platform to say, here, add these, you know, three main pictures and more pictures, add video, add your information. Um, you're not starting from scratch. It's, um, it's a tool more than anything, in my opinion. Um, use it. Um, don't just, you know, type out stuff and like send like, a, you know, you don't have to type things out on a Word document and put that as the picture. Use the software, work with the software. Um, there's now, you know, you can add your work experience and things like that. Um, so I think it's just like make sure you're using the tools that you're given because it is a complicated thing. Um, number four, you don't need to spend a lot of money. We talked about this. Um, you can if you want to, if you feel like it, but um, you don't have to. You can represent your child authentically and professionally um, using the tools that you have at home. Uh, number five, let your older child have input. Um, obviously, a baby is not going to be like, yeah, I like that picture. Um, but an older child, if they're looking to model, if that's something that they want to do, um, let them have some input. Portfolio is a way of them representing themselves. And obviously it's going to be through you because you are their parent and they're a child. But um, if they're older, let them have some kind of input. Say like, what kind of pictures do you feel represent you best? Or do you want to write a short bio about yourself? Do you want to record a quick video telling people who you are, what you like? Um, I think that that's a great thing to be able to say, like to put up there, the older your child is, to get them to speak for themselves a little bit because they are the ones that are being represented in the situation. Um, six, don't take it personally. So that's just something that's a little bit outside of the portfolio realm, but be, even if you are, if your child is not picked for something, it does not mean your portfolio is bad. It does not mean your child is not right. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean your child is not adorable. Um, especially when it comes to children, especially when it comes to shoots like we do, which are product centered, it is all about the like time and place. We're looking for a very specific height, weight, age, skill set. Um, oftentimes we'll cast like a younger version and an older version of a child. So we're between two children who have almost the exact same specs, but one of them looks more like the, the younger version of the child. That's who we'll go with. Um, it is most, it is not personal, you know, and I've never had a situation where a parent has reached out feeling like it's personal, but just to reiterate, you know, your child is adorable and your child will get cast for something. Um, but if they're not for a certain situation, it is most likely for a variety of factors that are entirely outside of your child's control and your control. So that's just a quick <laughs> thing to make sure people know. <laughs> Yeah, and on this, I'll just add that just keep on applying. I mean, if yeah. they can match the role for this specific project, they can apply to hundreds other ones. One hundred percent. They're always looking for a different kid. You know, it's just it's totally a time and place. Like we've had kids that we've used before that we love working with, but they're like just a month too old for a product. So we don't get to work with them again. And it's a bummer. Or there's a child that we think is so adorable and we would love to work with them, but we have to say, okay, we'll work with them hopefully in the future, because they're not meeting the certain criteria. Um, and it's never personal. It's always, you know, we're always bound by the shoot that we're like the product that we're looking for. Um, the, you know, we're the parameters or like, for example, oftentimes we'll cast like a month in advance. If your child is nine months today, but it will be 10 months then, we can't cast them even though we're looking for nine months old, nine months old, because they're going to be entirely different in a month. Right. So there's so many different things that can happen. There's so many different reasons you might not get cast, but do not let that deter you. Children like 
you know, you just apply, apply. If it works, it works. Um, and then it leads right into act fast is our next one. Um, we are in a situation right now where we just had a uh, casting call go out a little, I think like a month-ish ago. Um, and we're filming next week and we just had someone respond now like, oh yeah, we'd be interested, right? So we have already cast um, because I reached out, you know, two weeks ago. These things move fairly fast, um, at least for us. We're usually putting casting calls out a month in advance if we can. Um, and we'll give you the date, we'll give you the shoot date upon um, posting. But be be quick, right? If you um, hopefully if you're checking or if you have um, you know emails enabled, anytime anyone sends you a message, things like that, like you want to be um, quick when it comes to responding because in a lot of cases, like if we're reaching out to five different babies or more for a certain role, if a person responds quickly and has the right information and the baby turns out to be exactly what we're looking for, we'll go with that person because they were the one that responded quickest. We got the information. We were able to lock them down. Um, it's it's I just that. <laughs> and actually, it's it's really crucial point. And thank you that bringing it up because uh, very often casting directors will tell me like they're not responding. And then yeah. how, like kids would get back, I mean, parents would get back, you know, in yeah. a week or so answering the message uh, on the platform. Yeah. And it's too late because, I mean, sometimes you have those uh, rush calls that you need this kid tomorrow yeah. or day after tomorrow because maybe someone, I don't know, said no, <laughs> something happened. A baby and got sick. That happens all the time. Yeah. Right. And that's why you have to be there. You have to react fast. And uh, it's yeah. really important. Right. And I totally agree yeah. So oftentimes what we'll do is, I mean, if we post a casting call, I'll look at the submissions, but if we already have a child that we are looking for, like an older counterpart, I'll just go in and I'll just search for talent and I will just message people um, on kids casting directly asking, hey, we're looking for this kid. Would you be interested? If so, you know, email me or whatever. And 90% of the time, I never get a response. Um, and if I do, it might be a while later and then we've already cast so if this is something that you're serious about, um, I would recommend just checking or if there's a way for you to have alerts on that it sends you an email or a text when you get a message on kids casting, I would have that on because, you know, sometimes we'll just, we'll go with whatever we can, you know, whatever in that situation it acts, the, you know, whoever acts the quickest um, and gets us the information. And sometimes, yeah, we're looking, you know, if someone drops out the week before, we're scrambling to find another model and in that case, whoever answers us quickest gets the job. Right. Um, so and they, they do. There, there is this uh, message notification. And if you have unsubscribed from emails, you can still leave the message notification to make sure when casting director is writing you, like messaging you, you'll receive yeah. that message. Because if you'll unsubscribe from all of them, you will never hear it unless yeah. you go on the platform and check for it manually. And that's yeah. why it's really important to um, make it like mark message notifications on in your profile uh, so that Emily can message you <laughs> and you can yes. get the phone. <laughs> I can't even, I mean, I can show you, but there's so many messages that are just, you know, and that's okay. I usually message more people than I need just because I know that the rate of them messaging back is so low. Um, but I just would recommend if this is something that you want to do and you want to get cast, like check your messages. It's not always just going to be um, in your like submitted, you know, you're not the, just the roles you submitted to, but it will be in your direct messages. Casting directors will just message you if you're like, Hey, you're ba or like, oh, sometimes we won't be, I won't be able to tell how old he is. So it's like, we're looking for a baby six to nine months. How old is your child? Like, would they fit in that time frame? And then send me an email and, you know, and that's how you, even if it doesn't work out, even if, for example, the baby is like 10 months, be like, oh, well, they're super cute. Can we add them to our database? And then you're going to be first on the list to be reached out and like to in the future. So there's really nothing, you know, you can always, if you respond, your likelihood of getting cast goes up by, I'm not very good at math, but some kind of percentage. Um, so yeah. And then Number eight, if you have a lot of assets, put them in one place. If your kid is like off the charts, you've got a ton of pictures, you've got videos, things like that, um, you know, put them in a Dropbox, put that link on there. Or if if they if I ask like, hey, do you have any video, you know, 
of your child, send me the link. Um, this is not a necessity, but this is just something, especially as your child gets older and does more jobs, has more like stuff from, you know, ads and things like that, put them all in one place. So you're not like sending me eight links of like, oh, they're here and here and here pull all of that together and make it right. You can have a secondary portfolio. Kids casting can be your main overview. Um, but then if you, for example, have everything in a Dropbox or a like Google Drive folder, something that something that you can share um, that has all of their work together, um, that's maybe more like all encompassing. Um, and then finally build up and uh, follow up and build relationships. Um, I would not recommend like, texting casting directors every day there's been you know we've been situations where I'm like okay you know <laughs> thanks for following up but we'll reach out in the situation but it is important um whether it's we reach out asking if you're available and then you don't hear from us for a little bit follow up say hey are you still casting for this role um or if your child's been cast we filmed and then you know we say oh the product should be out in January um, and it's January and you haven't heard anything. Um, unfortunately, product schedules all over the place, you know, no one, and sometimes things get pushed. Email us. Um, hey, we were supposed to, we, you told us that the product was out in January. Just wanted to check on the status. Um, and usually it's like, oh my gosh, hi, like it got pushed a month, but I will make sure to email you as soon as it's, it's done. Um, and then, you know, that way you're able to follow up. And then the build relationships part is we have families that we've worked with several times. Um, we have babies that we love that as they, you know, we worked with a child that was like literally like two weeks. And then we worked with her when she was like seven months, you oh, know, wow. and you right, like, especially when you have younger kids or even with like, for me specifically, maybe not as much because we kind of age out at age four with our products, but for things like if you're working with um, agencies, for example, talent recruiting, build those relationships because, in, you know, we have a database where if I have reached out to a family and unfortunately for some reason that we can't cast them, I will put them into my personal data database. And that's where I go first. Before I even hit kids casting, I go into my Excel spreadsheet and check on like, here are the people that I've had conversations with that seem great and their kids are cute. We'd love to cast them. Um, I will reach out to them before I reach out to anybody else. Um, and that's just from building that relationship. So that's just going to be important, um, especially when you're starting to kickstart a career. If you can build relationships with casting directors, with agencies, um, you know, don't be unprofessional, but building that relationship is going to be important because that's how you get multiple jobs. And that's how you get, you know, if I'm asked by people, hey, we're looking for a baby for this kind of shoot. Do you have any recommendations? I will be like, yes, we worked with these kids. They were amazing. Their parents have been very responsive, you know, things like that. That's going to be how you're going to get recommendations. So I think that that, yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> my last one is just um, my email that if anyone does want to reach out, feel free. If you're in the Chicago area, we're always looking for babies. If your baby's really cute and loves the camera. Um, but otherwise, I'm happy to um, give other advice or take a look at profiles or whatever. I am obviously a very niche casting director. We're looking mostly ages zero to four, um, but I'm happy to do any kind of notes or things like that. And I'm not an end all be all, um, get more than one opinion, but <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I have to present um, except for if you want to go into the profiles quickly. Yeah, I think because uh, I mean, time is running so fast. Sorry, I like, just talked and talked. <laughs> it's so good. And just uh, I love listening to you. And I'm sure all the parents just I can see that they just keep on listening and no one is leaving. So uh, I mean, uh, I think, yeah, the most uh, important also will be for them to see um, uh, the profile, like the the one that you consider the best, I mean, the most yeah. professionally uh, um, filled out. But we can start with a couple, maybe just for you to show showcase and provide recommendations with what's missing in that profile. And then yeah. you can show the, the perfect one. So that parents- Okay. Um, yeah, so you had sent me a couple of profiles and I'd look through them. And the thing is no profile is like most, unless you're literally, there's nothing on it 
you're you don't have a bad profile um so one of the ones you sent me was Ari and we've worked with her actually a couple times this video right here um at the bottom is one of mine which is always great to see right like this is a great rec uh, representation of like she is in a video she's prominently featured in the video she was hired and obviously it worked out great show it I like if I'm a casting director this is a great thing to see like yeah great like you've been hired and here's the product of what that is um they have tons of skills obviously great um two years old is like it gets kind of you know is it two years two years three months that's my personal thing um just be as specific as you possibly can obviously um social profiles is something that's interesting um if you have like a dedicated Instagram to your child if that's your thing that's great it's always a great place to see more pictures or see them like in their everyday life not a necessity um, there is something to be said about making sure that there's a certain level of privacy, like they are your child. So you are allowed to not let us into like your entire life. So do not feel like you need to put your personal social media on there unless it's something that you feel comfortable with. Um, and then with here, my one main note for um, Ari and her mom, who, hi, I don't know if you're here, but um, <laughs> is they have a lot of pictures. Um, it just kind of keeps going. Um, and there's more and more. My note would be with the three pictures that you have up top, I would say a max of 10 pictures total. After that, it gets confusing. You're not sure which are the most recent. It gets a little bit overwhelming. And some of the pictures here, like um, I really do like this main picture. Like I get to see her face. We see her. I would love to see her looking at the camera that would make it a little bit more like she's comfortable she and what you know when she sees the camera she wants to look into it um but you get a little bit of variety um but then it gets into these more everyday pictures that you know you're just taking because your child is cute and playing and that's great but I would just really narrow it down to the best of the best get the really good smiling pictures um get the really good her doing stuff this is a great picture right you're seeing her look cute the hair is adorable like Things like this are really gonna be pictures that make you stand out. Sometimes when I see kind of these walls of pictures, it makes me a little hesitant just because I can't look at all of these <laughs> possibly, for, you know? Um, so that would be my main note, but they do a really great job. And this is what I was talking about earlier with like adding your, your work in this way. You can see she's done a ton of work and it's very clear about what kind of work she's done when she's done it, um, which I think is great. So like in terms of amount of photos, your top three are going to be your most important. That's where you want your smile, your cue, you know, your first impression, that first picture. It has like that's always what comes up um, and then just kind of limit it to, I would say, a maximum of like 10 at the end here um, is my main note. Um, and then some other kids. This profile is super interesting because there obviously are professional headshots. Um, which is, it does seem like, see, I, this is what I was talking about earlier. These are not most likely professional. Like we went in to get him modeling headshots. These are like, we went in to do family pictures, right? Like you do a family picture, you pose with your siblings, your parents. That is a great way to get professional pictures that are going to not just be a headshot that you use once, but that are going to be, you know, family pictures. If you're going to go in get some professional pictures taken, just ask for like two or three little pictures of just them. And you know, there you go. Um, same here, there's a lot of pictures, just pick a couple. Um, and then I would say this picture needs to be a smiling picture. That's just my personal preference. Obviously he's very comfortable in front of the camera, something like maybe this picture here would be a you know better representation, but they did do a cute little slate, which is adorable, right? Like showing him talking to his mom, um how he reacts like she says like um show me you know blow me a kiss you know so that they you can see that they are able to do a certain things and that he feels comfortable in front of the camera is a great thing to see um and then there could be a little bit more um like skills or like a little paragraph about him things he likes to do would just be great to know um and then if we want to get into some like oh older children I think this is a great picture a total personality picture 
Um, clearly, you know, you get a side profile, not necessary in my opinion, unless you're looking for very specific types of work, right? If you're looking for like high fashion modeling, things like that, full body, but I would just say you can totally do more like kids type pictures. Again, I kind of wish there was like a little like line about her, but we do get a good amount of information from her skills. Um, ethnicity is where things get a little bit complicated because obviously that is something that is kind of a personal question. You don't want to get like, you know, cross any lines, but be as specific as you can. I've never, the only situation which I'm ever filtering ethnicities is um, if I'm looking to match a child, for example, right? If we have a child um, and we're looking to like make sure that the older child looks like them. Um, and in that case, other is a little bit difficult to, to find, I would say. Um, but videos, I think are always great. And then here you get some really solid pictures of like, again, this seems like a family shoot that you did um, as a great way to use or like things like this, where it's like, this is a picture that, you know, a parent took, but you get a great representation of her, her in front of the camera, her performing um, and things like that. So that was a super quick rundown of a couple of profiles. <laughs> um, and then this is Theo. This is the uh, profile that I, when we were looking, talking about what like my kind of ideal profile looks like. Theo is a baby we worked with before that I've taken pictures of before that we've casted. And I just think it's a really great representation and has kind of all the things that I usually look for. Really strong, smiley, adorable main picture, right? That's looking at you. He's looking at the camera. He's aware of the camera. He's aware of you. And then we get, you know, a full body picture. This is actually one of the pictures um, of him on set. So we're seeing him in a situation. And then we get some of this information. Um, my only thing would be, right, it says 10 months up here, eight months in here. So we have a little bit of a discrepancy. I would just make sure to update that. Totally fine. Um, things like height and weight are also going to need to be updated. So if you're saying like, at, maybe at writing like as of, you know, March 9th, height and weight, um, adding a date of birth, there's contact information. And then he actually, they posted, this is a video of me taking pictures of him on set, actually. Um, so his mom just took some like video while they, we were working on set, showing him just like us gushing over him and him doing all his little poses and he was perfect and just showing how he works on set, um, which is a great thing to see, right? If you're a casting director, you want to see that he's doing perfectly great. Um, and then here we go, just a couple of more pictures different scenarios. He's always smiling, always looking into the camera. Um, and then here is actually from that specific photo shoot, there's a direct link to our website that has him on the product. You can see, oh, great. Like he did so good. He's in product in stores, right? Um, which is a great thing to have. And if that's something that you know exists and you don't have the link to it, reach out to the casting director, reach out to your contact at wherever there was, they'll send it to you. Um, because this is like, this is the picture we took that day. And it's now the picture that's on every product. It is in Walmart stores. It is like literally everywhere. Um, so that's an amazing thing to represent yourself with. Um, I used to always have things like that in there. Um, so that's why I pulled this as being like kind of my example, um, because that's really what I'm looking for. It, had, it kind of have, has all of the main bits and pieces. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. Um, I am, we still have uh, this Q&A session <laughs> to run through. Uh, yeah, but, no worries. I mean, uh, I see that we're running out of time. Uh, so I guess um, let's just uh, go over several questions. I'm sure not, not all of them because we're really out of time, but um, let's just, I'll just pick several uh, for, for you to answer. Uh, so let's see. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, I have this specific question. Um, I know that um, the industry is quite, quite diverse today. Uh, so maybe you could answer that. Um, I have an autistic child. She's shy and not that comfortable with camera, but she's a very pretty kid. Um, do you have, um, I mean, situations or projects where you're looking, looking at the descriptions and you see like if the person is autistic, you 
she I mean the the kid still have a chance for some kind of photo oh shoot. yeah um I mean diversity is something where most of the time I'm we're not like okay we're going to be hiring a, you know we're not specifically looking for it but in no case is it ever going to be an issue unless it's a genuine like unless you know it's causing like they can't travel you know we never want to put a child in a situation where they are entirely uncomfortable if um she's shy and not that comfortable with the camera um I would uh, you know and I think Shannon who is um my boss actually at Coolcraft hi Shannon um commented on it um because she's worked with me on a ton of these shoots um you know we want to show all kinds of kids it's not just gonna be one type of kid using our product and I'm hopeful that that's what most casting directors think as well um so if your child matches a certain scenario you know situation and if that's what we're looking for um I'm always going to reach out I would say if that's something that is a hurdle for her add it in the description write a little thing like hey you know she's shy um and she's not super comfortable in front of the camera but she would love you know an opportunity to to try um I think that's a great you know make sure to put something about it um but uh, you know and maybe get a camera or you know take more pictures of her and get her more comfortable in that situation I think that there's plenty of ways to do that before they even get cast um but you know, if you put that in the note so we know, and that's something that we can work with, um, I don't think that's ever going to dissuade anyone. I would just say be as honest and clear as you can about that. Um, we're always looking for all kinds of kids. Like, I, you know, want to make sure that we're representing any kind of child that's going to be using our product or that could be using our product. Um, and if, you know, if you're still posting your child, if you make them profile, I would just say, like, you know, in your little about, write a sentence like, you know, if you're comfortable sharing that she's autistic or just being, you know, saying like, she's not very, she's shy and she's still working on the camera, um, write that in there, but, you know, still apply to stuff. I don't think it should dissuade you at all. Um, and if that's something that you want to work on at home, you know, taking pictures and getting her more comfortable with that, that's great. Um, but there's, in most situations, we will adjust our set. You know, we work with all kinds of kids and we give ourselves more than enough time on set. We'll, you know, I, in and you know, if we're going to go start to finish, it'll take us an hour, but we'll schedule three hours knowing a child is not going to cooperate. You know, we work with children. Most casting directors that work with children know how they work. Tons of breaks, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, hey, smile, and then you get a, you know, fruit snack, right? Like, it's a lot of that. We know how to work with the kids. So um, yeah. I don't think that that should be a dissuasion at all. I totally agree. And uh, from kids casting side, I can I must say that we also have very different requests from casting directors and very often they're yeah. looking for for any type of kid. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Just put it, up, put it up on the profile so that casting director can find your kid. Um, yeah, don't let that stop you. Like still apply. But I would say put that on there. I mean, it's not and it's not like a it's not a disability. It's something that makes your your child it, your child is still going to be out in the world using products as always, you know, things like that, especially if they're, you know, looking if they don't have any specific, you know, if they're not looking for any specific type of, of you know, if they're looking for like a child that's going to go up and talk to eight people, then, you know, maybe that's not the right role, but don't let that stop you. <laughs> Right. Okay. So let's get to the next question uh, from Raya. At what age is a slate appropriate? Um, a slate, it just whenever. I, I think that if I were to pull up a child, like a baby, and it's just a slate of them babbling, adorable. That's a personality trait. Um, I would say as soon as they're talking, as soon as, you know, as soon as if they're interested in acting as soon as they're talking and would be able to be hired for lines, they should be, you should have a video of them talking, if that makes sense. Um, and, you know, a baby does not need a slate. If you want to do a quick video of the baby being like, hi, wave to the camera, like that's, that's could be their slate. That's appropriate. But um, I don't think that there's a certain time. I think it's, entirely you know for Theo for example um if Theo is going to have a slate it's probably just going to be him waving or like babbling or you know and that's adorable and that's a great slate for him and a 10 year old should have could have a slate of them saying their name and like some like their favorite subject in school things like that it, it you know 
I don't think that there's an age where like, if you don't have a slate at this age, you're not getting hired. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I have a question from Tanya, actually good one. I noticed that the profiles have a star rating. Do you cast based of the stars? No, um, I do not. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure, and this might be on me, what feeds into that from the kids casting side. I'm assuming if they get hired for things, it kind of ups. Um, I look at it to say, okay, they've, you know, it usually implies they've been hired for a couple of things or at their, at the very least, like applying to things. So for me, it's more of a meter of like how in involved they are. Um, but I'm never going to say, oh, you know, that child doesn't have a professional profile strength, so I'm not going to hire them. Um, but if, for example, they have a very low profile strength, it often just means there's not enough information. They're not updating it frequently. And that's the thing that's going to deter me more than the star rating does. Right. And I'll just I'll jump on this one. The rating, it does reflect the level of your profile. If you have like high quality photographs, I mean, the pictures, I mean, the nice pictures of the kid, all the descriptions, skills fill out. And the more information you have on your profile, the higher rating you have. And uh, for example, if Emily is a casting director in this case, we'll be looking for kids uh, by specific criteria. Uh, the kids who have uh, more filled out profiles will be on the top. They will have yeah. higher rating. And the ones that have either no pictures or like some information missing, uh, they will have less rating score. So basically it's it's very important for you to fill out as much as you can in the yeah. profile so that casting directors, when they search manually for the specific kid, they will see you right away on the top because yeah. there, there are many kids and uh, you always want to be seen, want to be considered. Yeah, and then I always just comes back to like, again, the more you update and the more information you have, it's just going to up your chances of getting at least reached out to. Um, I'm much more likely to reach out to a, a profile that has pictures and, you know, some text and a video and a bunch of information than I am to a, a profile that only has one picture. Again, it just shows the amount of effort you're willing to put in um, and also just like how much you're going to be like how easily you're going to be responding to my requests. Right, right. Um... If we can get back to that question about ethnicities, yeah. um, if the kid, for example, if is like half Hawaiian or yeah. have some other ethnicity, or he is Hawaiian but he looks also like a different ethnicity, <laughs> how would you? I mean, pick the kid. Yeah. Would you filter by ethnicity? Will you filter just? I mean, choose by the the face. I would, like I said, I if we are doing a general search or if we're doing a casting call. Um, I'm always hitting all ethnicities. It is not about that at all. We are looking for the kid that fits the role the best. Um, it doesn't matter about any of the other things. And then it really comes down to, you know, height and weight, et cetera. Um, if I am searching ethnicities, it is only to match, um, a previous child. And even then it's less about that and more about the way that they look. Um, I'm not familiar if they can do more than one on kids casting, if it's like a, you can only put in one ethnicity or more than one. I would just say, if you can do more than one, add everything that applies. Um, I've seen multiple. Um, so like if your child is um, biracial, add both, you know, um, and then, you know, maybe that's something that um, you put in your about as well. Like mom is so-and-so, dad is so-and-so, you know, if that's something that you feel is important to, you know, her represent their representation. Um, again, it just comes down to as much information as possible. Um, something like other is hard to read just because I don't really know what that means. Um, and if we're searching for, your, um, you know, if we have a child um, that we're looking for and we're searching for a specific ethnicity, other usually doesn't come up. Um, so they're just going to be kind of left out of that search most likely. But, and that may be a question for Kate, if there are, if, if, if you can do multiple, um, I would recommend that, right? If you can't. Well, no, no. For now, we don't have this option. Okay. Have to mark. And so I would say go with whatever is, and unfortunately, so much of this is visual. Um, people were hiring children based most mostly on the way that they look, um, just because it's modeling, it's you know video and things like that. Um, my recommendation would be 
go with what's closest to how they look, but add it in the about, make sure that, that that's something that you can represent about yourself. And maybe that's something that one day kids casting will give you an opportunity to add more. Um, and then I would say add as many as you can. Um, but I would just say to try and stay away from other just because it does limit um, in certain searches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, there's a question from Taloya. Um, can you add one or two dressed in all seasons to your profile? I mean, we still have this question about uh, the clothing and um, I mean, if yeah. you have this shoot in winter or in summer, do you care? how? No, I, is? it, so that's, I don't think that that matters. I think it's, I'm, I'm not hiring your child for the outfits they're wearing. I'm hiring your child for the way that they look um, and act and see. Um, so my most important thing is, is can I see your child's face? Um, if you have a, an adorable picture of your child smiling into the camera, gorgeous, perfect, and they're wearing a winter coat, add it. It doesn't matter that they're wearing a winter coat. Um, if they're wearing a hat that obscures them, that's going to be a little bit more of an issue because I want to make sure that I'm seeing the child, but don't go out of your way to show like spring, summer. Cause also half the time we film things in the winter, um, inside and they're wearing a t-shirt, right? So it's not as important about what they're wearing as long as you're representing the child that's inside <laughs> the clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, and I guess we're, um, we have just a couple more like, last questions and then yeah. we're done. Um, let's see, Kelly is asking, my daughter is um, a biracial. Her portfolio contains mainly picture with her hair out and curly. When auditioning for future roles, her hair can be a, in a protective uh, styles like braids, and it makes her look different. How do we deal with presenting her accurately? Yeah, um, so that's a, that's a, like, I think comes back to being like up to date. Um, and we've had this a couple of times, especially with uh, children when they get older and they have more hair because most babies don't have a ton. Um, and when it comes to children, um, that are biracial or um, African American, where hairstyles, you know, are something that is for a, like a longer period of time, or like they go, you know, you get your hair done, and that is your hairstyle for a period of time, but it does change. Um, I would just say, keep it as updated as you possibly can. If your child is a current hairstyle, and you know, it's going to be that way for a while, update the main picture to be that picture, or in the about, say, um, hairstyles currently so and so. Um, most times we do go off based off of that, right? It is a little bit um, difficult when a child is wearing a certain hairstyle in the picture. And then when you get it, like, I will always request if I am considering, I will email them and I will say, can I have a recent picture of this child? Um, just to make sure that those line up because you can never know. Um, and if those are different, while that's fine, you do have to kind of change the way that you're then like picturing the scene. So I would say if you can keep it as updated as possible, um, do so. If, you know, if, for example, it's changing like every week, though, then that's something that, um, you know, if it's consistent, like if she goes between natural hairstyle and a certain protective hairstyle, um, have pictures of both of those. But if it's, you know, if it's not consistent, maybe add in the about like um, might have a different hairstyle, like can send you a recent picture upon request, things like that, I think would be the easiest way to handle that. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. And I guess uh, the last question, uh, are you casting? <laughs> any <projects laughs> right you I mean, always. <laughs> we don't have a current casting call going um, because we do have a shoot next week, um, which is what we are casting for. But spring and summer are our busy seasons. It's when we go outside with the strollers and everything. Um, so there will be more coming up. Um, my other note, and I totally forgot to mention this earlier, but I think there was a question about this too. Location is fairly important. I know location you can put in on kids casting, but I've we only hire Chicago area um, moms and kids and dads. Um, if you're in the Chicago area and are interested, um, my email was on that last slide. I'm happy to send it in the chat again. If you want to send me your kid's profile, um, 
or uh, just want to reach out and kind of see what we're hiring. Um, we will be in, you know, in the upcoming months for sure. We always are. Even if we're not hiring, I would always, I'm always down to get, you know, profiles and then build those connections and add the kid to the database. That way, you know, I can reach out to them if we have something. Um, but I would just also recommend if you see a casting call that says like Chicago only and you live in Florida, don't apply for that. <laughs> Um, there will be listings that will say like nationwide or that'll say like, um, you know, travel included. You can apply for those, but our, like our casting calls, for example, say Chicago only, um, which means that we are not willing to pay, you know, we're not doing travel or anything like that. Um, and any child that's submitted from anything further than like, you know, right, like right outside of that area will not be accepted. So just keep an eye on that as well. Um, but yeah, if you're in the Chicagoland area and are interested, um, I'm happy to, um, I can pull up, I don't know if you want to see that slide again that has my um, information on it. Um, feel free to uh, reach out and um, send me your child's info. Um, or if you need um, any advice on the profile or anything like that, let me know as well. Um, but yeah. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. Yeah. And if there's any questions we didn't cover, like feel free to email me as well, or I can go in the chat and respond. I know some of my colleagues have actually been going in there and responding to some questions, which is great because they have, they've been working with me for a long time and they know just as much um, as I do. So if you see someone respond, Shannon or Lane, they're working with me and um, I would, I would take their recommendation. <laughs> Right. And then maybe you just can just give us uh, your last advice to, to all the moms and dads. They're just in the beginning of their kids modeling career. Um, yeah. what's I would your just say, I would just say like apply, apply your, you know, build your portfolio, add as much information as you can represent your child. Like, you know, don't want, people won't hire if there's nothing on there. We need something to work off of and then just apply. Um, someone will, I mean, you like your child will most likely get hired and that's the first that hardest one is the first one and then you see how it goes and then it's going to be it's going to be great from there great great thank you thank you once yes. again uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, today and uh, we'll see you on our next webinar and thank you emily for your of knowledge course. thank you so and much for having me <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It was really like so many valuable insights. And I'm sure the parents already, uh, like, you know, are on the platform. <laughs> <updated> the profiles. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Add those pictures, do everything that you can. And, you know, if you're doing this and just advocate for your child, you know, be the person you're the. we can't talk to them directly, but we can talk to you. So email back and send out things and, and you're basically their agent. <laughs> so well, we've been waiting for more casting calls from Callcraft. And I wish, Always. Could use, you know, products for, uh, <laughs> for, um, for kids of a wider range, age range, yeah. you know, for older kids, <laughs> we'll have twice more casting calls from Emily. Oh yeah, we won't stop. There'll be tons and tons, but yeah, keep an eye out. They'll be posted. Um, and like I said, feel free if anyone wants to reach out or if it's in the Chicagoland, we're in the West Loop. Um, I'm also like, you know, if you want to reach out to Colecraft in general, but we're always looking for babies. Um, we'll always have more products to film videos of, but it's, we love, I love kids casting. It's been a, it's been a huge help. Um, and we've been able to find some really amazing models and build some really great relationships. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. And see you on the next webinar. Bye.